Okay, let's go again. Uh, we've got our floor and walls done, floor and perimeter walls, I should say. Let's uh, close this 3D view and we'll look at adding some partitions now. So on the architecture ribbon, it's a wall type and I want to use PARTN P100P block. So it's a blockwork partition, 100 millimeters thick, but with plasterboard either, plaster either side and it's a partition type. So the position for this one has to be very careful because I want the I really want the, the masonry to carry on through. So center line isn't necessarily the best one to use here. Uh, what I'm going to use is core face exterior. Okay, that way if I start my wall at this position you can see that the walls carrying out and so is the the plaster finish so I'm going to drag out and I want to go this way by say 7000 I'm going to go downwards now when I move down you can see it, it kind of snaps to 90 degrees if I get to this position a, a green line appears running across indicating where uh, I would be in line with the next wall so I can select there go across to the back to the wall and everything's exactly in line that's really helpful so I'm taking the line the wall in perpendicular to the perimeter wall the block work in a leaf anyway okay now press return and everything merges in nice and cleanly okay let's drag a, a wall across now Okay, this is going to be effectively one side of a corridor and return and if I want to copy that wall I could con use the, get the modify button hold control and drag the wall okay I just did a random drag there but uh, let's say I want this to maintain a 1400 millimeter corridor which is your kind of standard size okay what I can do is edit this dimension so if I make it uh, if I edit it first to 1400 okay and then if I click on this button underneath it'll make the dimension permanent then click on the line a small padlock appears and that will lock the width of the corridor now we're in 1 to 10 still at 1 to 10 scale here so the dimensions are going tiny they make really small so let's go back to 1 to 100 and things will be a bit more legible. So that dimension is a bit far away from where it's needed. So I'm just going to drag it up and in to the corridor just to keep it tidy. Okay, and what would happen now is if I tried to move the edge of the corridor, both sides of the corridor go together. Okay. Right, I'm going to move the corridor until this says 4500. So I can actually just change that to 4500. Okay, just to make sure it's there. And then I'd like to subdivide this space. So drawing partitions. So I'll just drag a couple across. And another one. Okay, automatically tidies up the junctions for me. Now we could rearrange these walls a bit if we wanted to. And in Revit, if you add your own dimensions to things, it can be used. They can be used to control the positions. So if I annotate and add some aligned dimensions. Okay, I'm going to go from center line of wall to center line of partition, and then keep going the center line of the next partition then the center line of the next wall okay you can see they're all different sizes I need to choose a position for the dimension line so I'm just going to take it to about here okay now if I zoom in close on the top of the dimension line here the, where the tick is you can see there's a couple of dots 
This dot can be used to reposition the actual location for the dimension. So you see if I click it, it goes to different positions. If I do the same at the bottom end, it pulls it into the wall. So it's it's very nearly accurately spacing out these rooms. Um, if I click the equal button here, you can see the EQ with a slash through it, that automatically resized the walls, it repositioned the walls. Okay, now in reality, these two outside rooms are a tiny bit bigger than this one, just by half a partition. Okay, it's just because I, I wasn't able to place I wasn't able to place this in the at the midpoint of the block work there. Okay, so I'm gonna unequalize it and then sorry, I do this all the time. I keep clicking on the dimension. I should click on the wall position if I want to move, if I want to adjust the dimension. So I modify, click on the wall, I can then adjust the dimension. So let's make this 2200. Zero, zero. And similarly at this side, click on the partition, then change the dimension to 2200. Okay, uh, so we've got some kind of director's office and a couple of manager's offices maybe. And this space, possibly a meeting room that doesn't need windows, we want it kind of quiet and, and dark for projectors and things. So up here, probably have an, an entrance lobby, and then you would go into the main office. So let's put in another wall across to, to draft proof and soundproof. And I'll just roughly place it here and drag it up to the, to the wall and return. Okay, and let's use our dimensions again to, to control the position. So we can annotate with an aligned dimension from center line of wall to center line of wall, pick a position for the dimension, and then let's make it so that it's actually dimensioning face to face. Okay, so we use the dot again. And the same on this side. The, uh, I need to, it's not letting me do it, I need to modify, pick the dimension, and the dot is, in a different position here, that's why I can't find it. Okay, the dot is slightly off the tick there. So I've got a size, I can modify that size by clicking the wall. So let's say we want to maintain, always maintain, um, say 2500 there. Okay, and that way if I move this wall, ah, I haven't locked it yet. Fool, fool that I am. I forgot to lock it, so I click on the line, click on the padlock, and then if I move the wall, the lobby wall goes with it. So I'll undo that. Now, you'd have the lobby at this side as well to keep it symmetrical, so I'll select both of those two items and mirror, but I'll need to use this mirror this time because I don't have a, a, a a point that I can pick, I'm going to kind of create a temporary mirror line. So use this one, I'm looking for a midpoint, drag horizontal, select, I get a warning popping up here saying that there's there's a problem with the dimension that gets that's been copied. That's okay, it's, it's because it was locked, so it, it this dimension can't be locked in the same place that this one is because it's it's a copy of it. So what we'll do is we'll just move the move the dimension down a bit so it's not hiding the wall. And then if I click on the dimension line, I can lock it in the same way. So that so that when this wall moves, it moves two walls. Okay, that's fairly tidy. We're, that's our partitioning done. Um, lots of walls over here. It'd be quite easy. Lots of strong walls, they're all masonry. It'd be quite easy to support floors over here. A uh, bit, bit more of a problem over here. We've got some reasonably big spans, probably about nine meters across here. That's a bit big for a floor span. So we break that up maybe with a line of columns. 
Now it'd be better if the columns were sitting on a on a grid line. Okay, so if I go to the architecture tab, architecture ribbon, I've got the datum item here, and this is where I can place grid put grids. Okay, I'm going to add a grid line in the middle of this wall. So I'll take it from the center line of the wall, drag out, and drop my marker there. I'll put a second grid line coming from the the middle of this wall. So that's a bit strange, you know. Quite often you would add the set your grids up first. Uh, okay, if I move over here, you'll see it wants to line up with the the bubble on grid line one. That's nice and tidy. And the third one, using the center line of this wall, will line up again. So as you can see, the numbering is automatically going in sequence. Very easy to change the numbering, so don't worry. Okay, now these grid lines are okay at this side, they're nice and tidy, but they, they're not coming through the plan on this side, which you'd expect. So if I modify, click a grid line, look for this small circle, and click and drag it. You can pull it through to the other side of the plan. Now if you wanted a number at both sides of the grid line, click in this empty box and the number appears at both sides. Okay. Go for your second grid line, find the circle. When you come over here, it'll line up with the end of the other one. And last but not least, I've got another circle there. I can line that one up. If I find the end, where is it? I don't see the mark lining up, to be honest. Let's try that again. Oh, there it is. It's showing up now. Okay. What I'm going to do is just pick up this little marker and move it back a wee bit just because it's kind of sitting on my drawing similarly here this one's a wee bit on top of the drawing so I'm just going to move it out okay these will these will get populated once the drawing once the drawing has been given a sheet number these things start filling up so don't worry about them being empty at this stage okay so we've got horizontal grid lines we really need a vertical grid line as well Okay, and I'll start the grid line at the uh, bottom and go to the top. Okay, and we'll modify that. Click on the grid line, and I'll put it uh, 4,500 4, away from the face of the other wall. And instead of it being grid line 4, this should be letters going horizontally. So I'll call this A. Okay, so we've got letters and numbers. If I added a second grid line, he says, second guessing things, it should add B onto that. It did. Okay. So I'll undo that, just letting you see that it would automatically add B as the next letter. Right, columns next. Let's see what we've got. So architecture, and then we want to add a column. And we've got structural columns or architectural columns. Let's go for architectural just now. So this is kind of the overall outer casing shape. And we're not worrying too much about the what's inside that. So 450 by 600 has been offered. See what else there is in the within, the within that family. They're all pretty big. 450, 450, 600, 600. So I think I need a smaller one. So I'm going to edit the type of column. So click on edit type and we'll duplicate this one and make it a, a new one. So to duplicate, we'll change its name to 200 by 200 and it doesn't need the number two on the end because it's only there's only one of this series. Okay, so that's only the name that's changed. This is where he actually changed the size. So 200 by 200. Okay, click OK. That then gets joined in to the family. Okay, so you can see it here now, ready to use. I can go over the plan, look for my grid points, and add my architectural column casing. Okay, 
So that takes us to where we want to be with the, the general enclosure. And we'll just stop it just there.